Good morning, people of the internet. What's going on? Today we're going to be jumping into part two of the Gretty V-Mount install. A um, few other things have changed since yesterday's video. First of all, I've shaved my horrible beard off. Um, and second of all, we have gone to the shops to go get a few little things that we uh, will need for the Gretty V-Man install. Um, so first of all, in terms of the thermo fans, if you guys are running the stock fans, you will need to get their Gretty patch loom sort of thing that goes in between the two. Either that, or if you're pretty nifty with a soldering iron, you can just put on some extended cables. That's no worries at all. However, um, if you're like me and have thermos, you're gonna need to extend the wiring anyway. Um, so what I did was I quickly cut off a section of wire, went down to JCAR this morning, and I grabbed a fair bit of extra wire. So if we just quickly come over here, my somewhat organized mess, um, I ended up getting some decent gauge wire. This right here isn't copper, so it's actually a different gauge. Um, it steps up, but it's gonna be pretty easy to adapt between the two. And this will hold around about 25 amps, which is no wires at all. And not only that, but we also went to Repco and we grabbed some power steering fluid. So the stuff I grabbed right here was this power steering fluid. I ended up grabbing two bottles of it, and then of course you can't go to Repco without just getting them. So I ended up getting naked glass, ended up getting some of this, which I've never used before, plus Mr. Black. And I also got, ended up getting all of these, which I thought was pretty sick. Uh, I ended up getting the black FD, which I was super stoked about, and this wicked turbo CRX uh, livery sort of thing. It's kind of cool. I love it. So anyway, um, yeah, enough of that. We're going to go back into uh, the install of the Gritty V-mount. So yesterday, we completed everything up to putting on the radiator hoses. I just have to put some hose clamps around it all. But everything is ready to go. The next thing I'm probably going to do is just extend this wiring, and then we're going to get back into installing the Gritty V-mount, which I believe the next thing is going to be the condenser. But we'll check the instructions. We'll go from there. If you guys haven't seen yesterday's video, you probably won't understand what's going on right now. So I highly recommend going out, checking out part one of the install, and then coming back here and checking this video out. So, let's get into it. Alright guys, so I know it's not the neatest job, um, I just ended up extending the wiring down to the fans. Um, it does look a little bit messy, not gonna lie. I ended up taping most of this down, uh, it just sucks that they're so thick gauge and they need to go down there. So um, yeah, we've, we've spliced it into the wires there, they go all the way down to the bottom of the fans. And I'm not going to get down, but you guys can see where the wiring goes down there now. So we'll end up getting something that goes and sits around that. They may even get in the way. However, I do think there might be a way that I can put it up through there, which I probably will end up doing anyway. Can you put it up through there, and then down beside the headlight, they can go down behind the oil cooler there and back down to underneath the radiator. So I think there might be a possi possibility that we could do that, even on the length that I've made it. But at the moment, it sits actually really nice, and um, I don't think it'll get in the way because the intercooler sort of sits around about there-ish. I might just even have to tuck that in a little bit nicer which will be fine. And everything from uh, here and down has no ducting or anything so we should be fine around there. It'll actually just sit nice and tight around there and it'll actually get hidden by all the intercooler piping. So uh, fingers crossed that's everything. Uh, I'm going to quickly put on the, all the hose clamps for all of these and then we'll be ready to start getting into the next step. Okay guys so the radiator's in, all the radiator hoses are in and everything Every one of the hose clamps is done up. I was still having a little bit of an issue in regards to this right angle piece right here being very close to that pulley there. I put a zip tie basically around that, but I want to try and find a better solution for this in the future. Um, I did even cut this down and I was still having issues with it. So I might even try and see if I can find a, a better right angle piece than this right here. But um, it'll be fine for now. That's no worries at all. I just gotta keep a very good eye on that over time and make sure that doesn't come off. So, so now that that custom weird pipe work that I had lying around worked and we have the fans all wired in, now we are going to go back into the instructions. Okay, so once all the radiator piping's in, plumb in your fans. All right, so now we are going to go back into the, uh, the air separator tank. Okay, so next you're going to grab your original air separator tank if you guys have an AST delete like I wanted to. Um, you probably don't have to worry about this step right here and work out your own way that the AST plumbs in. So for this one right here, you're going to get bracket number 49 and that routes just like that there. Now it says mount using the original hardware. I have a few of these spare from some of the other things that I didn't need to use. So I'm just gonna use a nice black hardware piece. Thread that in right there. And then this right here goes up near the brake booster and I'll show you guys where that goes. Right here, so we're over the far side of the car at the moment. Uh, this right here is my alarm, that's my brake booster. So I believe this goes just down in here. It looks like it's gonna be a bit of a 
bit of a tight fit with all the stuff that's in there. So there is a few lines down here, just see what you can do working around them. Alright, so that's that right there. So just be just be wary, there are what is it? What are those? Oh, so you have your bonnet catch. You also have another thing as well. Oh no, there's another line there. Um, both of them will end up hitting it, so just put some foam around the outside of it, and also put some foam on the chassis where it actually hits, if you guys do have a Viper alarm here like a lot of other people. Um, if not, man it further back and it won't hit anything, so I'm just gonna quickly do all that. Okay, so next up, grab the garden hose, <laughs> and also grab your AST. Um, I just took mine out for ease of doing all this once again. Um, but this side plug right here is going to be attaching to there and then the one from the bottom is going to be going down and into here. So just try and make this as neat as humanly possible. Also make sure you were keeping it away from everything hot. To be honest, I think I'm going to go up and above this blower valve right here and then go straight down. And then one hose can go up here, one hose can go straight down into there. Um, that's going to keep it away from everything hot. You don't want to end up burning through these coolant lines because that's just going to make an absolute mess and you run the risk of overheating your car if you don't realize it. So there you go. All right, let's quickly get to it. Alrighty, so a little bit later and a few little sort of very specific placement zip ties which they include. I ended up getting everything routed and everything looking pretty decent and pretty tight. Um, so you guys can see the overflow that I have uh, currently chilling up here. Um, I've just sort of routed above those two lines. Um, these are going to look pretty cool when they have some green coolant running through them. We're going to have the blue, green, and the yellow. It's going to be a pretty cool little, you know, kind of spicy engine bay. But um, ideally, I just wanted like one single color. But eh, oh, well, who, who cares? Um, so using some white zip ties to try and blend it in a little bit. Um, I have done the bottom hose down to the bottom radiator pipe. Um, and that comes up. Uh, being very careful not to hit the RS uh, oil cooler line, which you can see right below it. So yes, yeah, so we've gone up and through that, and we've basically just used the bonnet latch as a good sort of tie-down point because it is nice and stiff, and it's not going to get in the way of anything crazy. So um, I've just used some zip ties, gone with the bonnet latch all the way up. Um, I did have to do a little bit of bending on this bracket right here to make the horn work as well and make sure it wasn't too tight uh, right there if you guys can see make sure it didn't bend and you guys can probably see down the bottom there we also haven't put any hard bends in the bottom tube as well the bottom tube goes down beneath the booster and comes out pretty much with the other pipe right there and then goes down to the bottom radiator hose um, this one right here just goes down the front um, yeah, I think the air intake comes up and like over this so I think doing this should be fine If not, we can do something to get that out of the way um, Ideally, I have no idea whether these lines uh, Will actually hold or anything if they send it with the kit. I'm gonna trust Grady that it works I've never used these types of lines before so we're just gonna see how it goes. They seem pretty sturdy um, I've just never used this before um, and we can upgrade to some better quality lines in the future if we want to so I think that's probably going to be on the cards for pretty soon But they look pretty cool. So we're going to see how they go. Okay, so next up We're going to be grabbing the AC condenser rubber mounts and we're going to be replacing the original OEM ones with these ones right here So let's quickly screw them in. Okay I'm not gonna lie these things are pretty annoying to remove as you can see they sit on top of these little things right here um, however, they are a little bit annoying you can't get a ratchet spanner in there um, and if you don't want to hear that then yeah you probably should have removed it before everything but anyway um, yeah these right here uh, have like a 19 mil hex on the bottom which you can get to it just takes a long time to do it so yeah rightio so the new little rubber things just thread down to the existing bolts down here it does have a nut on one side but I just don't think you'll need it Oh no, they're gonna be super hard, aren't they? God damn it. Alright, spread these out with some WD-40 first. Or alternatively, grab a 10 mil and send it down. Ready right, guys, so now we get started on the condenser. So if you guys remember yesterday, I had my condenser. I still have the dryer attached, everything else as well. Gave it a little bit of a new lease on life. So I tried to straighten up just as many fins as I possibly could. And then I gave it a nice big coat of black paint. You can see how terrible of a job I did there. It's just the lighting, I swear. Um, but yeah. We gave this thing a new lease on life. We have a fresh coat of black paint on this thing. So it looks real good. You can barely notice any of the bent fins. So, uh, first of all, we're gonna quickly zap off all of the old brackets, and then we can get to installing the new condenser bracket.
Okay, so my condenser is a little bit bent, but I'm hoping that shouldn't uh, change any of the bracketry or anything that we need. So, first of all, this larger condenser bracket, uh, as soon as we take off all the protective shielding, will sit just on top like that. We'll grab some nuts as well. <laughs> Okay, and the same thing on the other side, just poking the opposite way. So. Okay, so next up, grab these two smaller bent brackets. They're pretty easy to find in that sort of little mess of other brackets that we have. Um, the double bent one is going to go on the thin side. So that will just sit on top right there and we'll bolt it in with the same bolts. This one right here, um, is going to bolt in facing this way. Gonna bolt up like that. So we'll quickly put those two on there. So once the condenser is now looking like this, grab your new AC tube, uh, which will come with it. And we're gonna be attaching that uh, at the very back. So I'll show you what it's supposed to sort of orientate like right now. It should look something along the lines of that, but uh, you can slightly bend it whilst it's in the car. It's not gonna hurt it too much. So um, I guess now, time to put it in the car. Alright, so quick tip whilst putting this in, uh, make sure that you don't hit your radiator because that sucks. And then also, there is a small rubber, oh sorry, small um, sort of clip right there which you need to take off as well. I didn't see that, so we'll, uh, we'll try that again. Alright, so we'll try that one again. Um, all those little tiny brackets, just make sure there's nothing on the actual frame rails because it is a very tight fit, especially if it's bent, which I could imagine that most of them probably are. So, very, very carefully without bending any fins or having anything drop down, just slowly lower it in place. That fit up a whole lot Okay, you can remove that really quickly. And your nut, don't forget them. And tighten them all the way down. You can do everything now all the way down considering it's in. Probably won't move around too much. Um, also, if you had anything loose from the radiator, you're pretty good now to uh, tighten everything up. Okay, so once the condenser's in, go around the entire setup, make sure that nothing is rubbing on your radiator whatsoever. So, uh, if you guys can see, nothing right there is touching the radiator. However, I did have one issue, which really, really sucks, but you can kind of see I danced up the radiator just a little bit. Um, luckily, it's all hidden, thank God. Um, but the actual angle of this hose right here was completely bent down um, and it went straight into the radiator once I tightened everything up. I could imagine that's also because of my horribly uh, not straight condenser, but if mine's like this, um, then I could imagine a lot of people are probably the same, to be honest. Um, so just make sure none of your AC lines are run are one, touching your radiator, or two, touching down here. Because something super annoying um, would be to have those AC lines rub through on anything to do with this. Because having to take the whole lot out and uh, potentially even having to replace this hose right here could be annoying. So uh, yeah, I could imagine, probably have to uh, do those two up there. We'll do that in a second. But yeah, just make sure that nothing is rubbing up through here. And don't be afraid to bend AC lines. They do bend. If you bend them too much, they will snap. <laughs> so just keep in, keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, they bend pretty fast, so just go for it. All right, so next step, grab some nuts and bolts and grab this baffle plate right here. Uh, this plate is going to be going over the top of the radiator, um, I guess. Oh, I'm not quite way this, not quite sure which way this goes. Potentially, uh, that looks like it. Uh, uh, potentially, oh yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so grab some nuts and bolts, add that up there, and then uh, I guess bend it down towards the condenser if it doesn't hit, um, but I'm fairly sure it should. So yeah, connect that. I 
honestly think that was one thing that really sold me over any of the other kits that were out there like uh, like Vinny Fab or HKS or anything like that is the fact that Gretty really spent a lot of time and effort into ducting as well as just doing the V-mount. A lot of other companies, Rotary Works, um, a whole bunch of people make a lot of very expensive V-mounts and there are some very cheap ones out there as well. You know, there's one I think in the States for 700 bucks and I'm sure it works. Um, however, just one of those things that really sort of led me to go with Gretty was just the amount of ducting that they had. So like even this sort of thing right here, um, even though it was in a V configuration, if there was any air that was going in between the radiator and the condenser that, you know, that didn't need to go through any of them would literally just go straight up and uh, go onto the engine for no reason whatsoever. So. So this is really cool, being able to do the first little bits of ducting, I'm so happy. It looks brilliant. The fact that they come, the fact that they put like this tape over everything, the fact that they put shielding over everything and everything, actually I've noticed that everything um, that faces up is the stuff that they have shielding on as well. So just having a really nice, neat aluminium piece, oh, just pieces in this car is just so nice. It looks wicked and I'm just, I'm loving this kit. It's just, for a bolt-on kit, it's bolting on and I am stoked. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, it asks for bracket number, well, 44 in this case, um, which is a long straight piece which can go between the two with a little 45 and then a 45 off that with a hole in it. Um, I have looked everywhere. I cannot actually find that piece. Um, I know for a fact that I didn't accidentally use a different piece because um, nothing else will fit. Now, and there's no other brackets that look like it. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what happened to it, but we will make it work. That's no worries at all. I'll just have to find something else to make it work. But I believe it mounts up probably about, yeah, actually it probably mounts up to that. Yeah, I'm going to go see if I can find something or see if I can find that exact piece. Once again, I'm not quite sure exactly what happened, but if you have it, use it. Um, I haven't moved any of the brackets. Yeah, it's not here. So, oh well, <laughs> that's okay. We'll make something work. Okay, so because I didn't use these little tiny radiator brackets just before, I decided to use it because if they're going to send it out to me, then I may as well do it, right? So I did that. <laughs> Not the nicest thing, but it looks like it's going to be exactly what they want anyway. So I'm not too stressed. Um, so we'll quickly just attach that to the car and then we'll start bending around some lines because this is going to be very annoying, you could imagine, but uh, we'll figure it out. Okay, so your new condenser will mount uh, down should be flat against that. I'm gonna have to move some wiring out of the way, but it will sit basically in that hole right there with a nut on the other side. So let's get it. Okay, so the instructions call for your AC line to then go around and, and work in some way. Um, mine were already screwed. Um, mine doesn't even look remotely, kind of almost looks like it's already been done. I'm going to see if this, abs uh, not just yet. Might have to bend it a little bit more, but, uh, should be almost done. So we're, we're just going to make this work. All right guys, so this section here might get a little bit gross. Um, with the AC lines already the way that they were, um, ideally you just bend them straight down. Um, but as you can see, mine goes way too far down and it's just going to end up looking really unneat. So um, I'm just going to connect it down here. So this line here is supposed to be on top right there and it sort of sits just out the way. So that needs to go down there now. So I'm just going to bend it and we're just going to make it work. Uh, just try and do it as neat as possible. Brody's personal car is uh, a lot nicer than this, but um, <laughs> that's probably as good as I can get it at the moment. Um, so what we did was we moved this line underneath the condenser to try and sort of tuck it away. And it actually tucked away quite nicely. We could even potentially, actually I might even try to just move that out the way a little bit more. Or we got a tool. Okay, so yeah, I managed to straighten them up. Actually looks pretty good down there, but once the intercooler's in, you won't even notice it. So um, yeah, it's looking really good. 
Rightio, time for the next step. Oh yeah, probably tighten up all the pipes too. I didn't do that. <laughs> well. Alrighty guys, we're on the home stretch. We now have the radiator installed, the condenser installed, all of our AC lines are all plumbed up, and even though it's not the prettiest thing, it's certainly going to work. So uh, now we have everything installed, we're ready to go. Now it's time to install some radiator ducting, and then we can get to our V-mount intercooler. So the next step is to grab these two pieces right here. Now these are gonna go down the sides of the radiator so that way every single little bit of air that goes in to the front of the car passes through the radiator. So now we have to do is attach some foam to the very tops of them and I'll show you where to put that. Okay, so with these pieces here, you want to be attaching the foam tape to everything up the very top of here. So, so we're gonna be taping it down to the top of that and these two little top pieces right here and I'll show you what I mean. And now we're gonna be mounting these to the sides of the radiator using this hardware included. So the side with the two pieces there is going to be going on the passenger side of the car and the one solid piece is gonna be going on the driver's side. So let's quickly install that right. Driver's side might get a little annoying to install simply because all of those AC lines, once again, don't hesitate to bend any brackets out of the way because it does bend nice and easily. So. Okay, so this first side here was actually quite difficult to do. What I had to do was basically uh, raise, the, raise the condenser and everything else um, so that way I could actually get around it. But I'll lower the condenser back down and that's all fitted now. Now we can just do the other side. Hopefully this, well actually, it can't be hard because there's nothing in the way. So <laughs> as long as it fits, it fits like everything else. All right, so now as you guys can see, if any air is getting in there, it is not coming out, which is absolutely awesome. That's exactly what we want. So uh, so there's a few little air gaps, like here and here, sort of around the sides of the condenser, and also here as well. Um, I probably will go around with some foam tape and try and seal most of that up because I would uh, feel a little bit better that way, making sure that every single little bit of air goes through the radiator or the condenser. You can never have too much ducting, I guess. I guess you could. I guess you could block it out, but yeah, no, either way. All right, next step, I believe, is to get the V-mount intercooler in. Whew. All right, let's do it. Okay, so for this next step here, you're going to need the remaining pieces right here, these three long pieces, and we're gonna be mounting them up on the radiator like. So this small little bit is gonna go on the center piece, once again, just loosely because it probably will wanna move around once it's in the car, and then these two just like this. We're also gonna be installing a big piece of the ducting right there as well onto the intercooler before it goes in, and then it goes straight in. So let's quickly do all of that now. Um, oh yeah, I'm excited. Okay, so we're gonna build the intercooler um, just apply all the ducting and everything so first of all on the back we're going to be installing these the angled bracket goes on the one that's welded furthest uh sorry closest to the end tank um and then also this little tiny bracket here is going to be going is going to be going like this and mounting on here and then we have this big piece right here so i'll do everything in front of the camera so you can all see but uh yeah getting very very close now these ones here i'm going to do all via hand tools because i do not want to scratch anything so Let's do that. Okay guys, so the intercooler is completely built. It's now time to drop it in the top of the car. Whew. All right guys, so once again, everything is nice and loose. Put the right way, might make it Let's start. Oh yeah guys, so my GoPro died. Hopefully this camera doesn't die. So these actually get put in off uh, like um off center. So very much like that. Woo yeah! That looks beautiful. So um yeah they actually sit off center. There's another baffle plate that goes over here, which I believe a little bit directs air into the cold air intakes there, so um, very cool. Whew. 
let's start bolting it in. Alrighty, so I've left the camera charged for a couple of minutes and can I just say, I don't know what these Japanese blokes are onto, right? Giving me some garden hose. But, how freaking sick is that? I'm gonna put some like LEDs behind that. This thing's gonna be pumping. This is uh, it's quite humorous. <laughs> But um, it's actually kind of cool being able to see the coolant, but um, I don't know. I guess I'm gonna be able to see if it's got air bubbles and stuff like even down here Just like watching it all sort of Do its thing. It was kind of cool to watch so uh, I'm glad it's there I don't know how long it's gonna stay there for but it's gonna be cool We're gonna have a weird mix of like green blue and yellow in this engine bay, but <laughs> Right so guys now is time to get everything else on the car So we have to do the intercooler piping. We have to do the throttle body elbow. We also we also have to put the filters on and a little plate right here. So I'll quickly show you guys the little plate that I'm talking about. It's going to mount up just down here. It's going to be really nice. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys right. Okay guys, so this right here is the final piece of ducting. So we're going to be putting this in the car right now. And uh, yeah, oh, this is sad. I've really actually enjoyed these last two days. So uh, yeah, anyway, we'll grab these bolts right here. Need whatever was left. Haven't really got much left. I think they give you some extras, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway. Um, so we have this piece right here. We're going to be installing that uh, That side there into the condenser and this side here is going to be going possibly into a spare spot or I'm not quite sure But we'll work it. Okay, so this piece right here should just be able to settle in place down here Somewhere along those lines and we will uh, we'll tighten all that up Okay, so yes, it does bolt in down there and this one right here should hopefully line up with that one there I'll make it work, but um, yeah easy done Okay, so that piece of ducting is all on there now. What it actually does is it allows for a little bit of cold air to come in for the cold air intake because the two intakes sit roughly about here and here, I'm fairly sure. So, um, yeah, it's going to sit really nicely in the car. I'm so happy with this. It looks incredible. All right, time to get started on, uh, I believe, the throttle body elbow. So let's quickly do that. Okay, so the throttle body elbow, this piece right here looks absolutely incredible. Now, I've actually wanted to get one of these before I even knew it came with the kit. Um, I'll take it out of the bag. So this right here is such a good looking piece. Now, uh, I'm unaware whether I actually have a gasket for this right here, whether they even do gaskets or whether it just goes on like that. I'm not quite sure. I'll have a quick look at the other side. Um, potentially, maybe even just goop it, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so they actually have an O-ring that sits in there also, so that'll be fine. We'll uh, we'll get to bolting that up. Hopefully that camera stays there, but we'll see how we go. One more thing I'll do after I get the single turbo kit is I, uh, before we get it retuned, will be a boost leak test. Um, even though I probably should do it now. Well, bits come off down the bottom here. And the throttle elbow. Sits on there just like that. Okay, so the throttle body elbow is on. So now comes the intercooler piping. So we're gonna get some silicon joiners, some hose clamps, do the intercooler piping between these two. Should be fairly simple, and then we can move on to the intake. So originally, I thought this thing was an intake for one of the turbos, the front turbo mainly. Um, and I thought it actually sat like that, but looking at the size of this and the size of that, it is definitely not the case. So I actually believe that it goes here, which will actually make a lot of sense because that gives it a straight, nice intercooler, intercooler pipeline. So um, yeah, that was gonna look so much better. Let's quickly zap that off and we'll chuck this one on. Right, so I'm just going to quickly make up some intercooler piping. Uh, these two pipes right here are the two intercooler pipes that go from the left and right hand side of the intercooler. Um, and I'm just going to match it up with these right here, just to make something work. And then we will work out exactly how it needs to go in the car, so uh, yeah. Also, just letting everyone quickly know that one is ever so slightly longer. That one there goes between the throttle body elbow and the cold side of the intercooler. Along with that, the silicon joiner also steps up from possibly a two to two and a half. The 
wiping is all on. It looks insane. So I will just wipe it down a little bit just to uh, get rid of all my horrible marks. Um, originally I had this flipped upside down. It has like a must have like a tighter bend here or something. It looked a little bit iffy, so um, changed it around the other way. Looked amazing. And this piece right here also looks insane. And both of them are going to clear the bonnet, which is absolutely awesome. There's plenty of room there. So now all we have to do is go through and we will connect the turbo elbows and do everything like that. That'll be pretty easy. And then we also have the two filters and the two intakes there. So um, apart from that, we're all good to go. And I'm stoked. Okay guys, we are so close to the finish. We only have a few more little parts to install. We have the two intakes to install. Um, and that is it. That is it. So, um, and then after that, I'll probably go around the whole car, see if anything's rubbing. Uh, top it up with all the fluids, ready for its first start tomorrow. Um, I'm probably gonna take it for a little bit of a dry up tomorrow as well, test this kit out, but um, everything is in there super solidly. I only just nip these up with the uh, with the machine wherever it went, so um, I will have to go back and re-tighten them all by hand because I want to make sure that I'm not gonna over tighten anything. But yes, it is looking incredible. I hope you guys are really enjoying it. So um, yeah, time to get onto the intakes. But first of all, I'm gonna quickly put that turbo elbow back on because I took it off thinking we'd have to change it and we don't. So the last two things are about to go on. So we have these two intake pipes right here which go down to the very front, down beside the intercooler right there. And then we also have these two filters right here. So they will both go on like very last. Actually, are these, no, they're plastic, just like the other ones. Okay, cool. Um, so. Anyway, I believe two of these lines go to the air pump. They go to lines that I don't have on the car anymore. Whether it's just being changed up, I'm not quite sure. Once again, I think they go to the air pump, but I'm not entirely sure. So anyway, I do not have an air pump in the car. So two of these lines are not gonna be used, one on each side. Um, now this side here, um, if it's mounted on the very top, will end up plumbing back into your blower valve. So these will plumb straight back into the pipes on both the smaller turbo and the bigger turbo. So yeah, and as much as I would love to just block these off, you can't on this RX-7. You, they actually play a very vital role in, uh, in basically adjusting how much boost you have. It's quite interesting, the whole setup, but you can't block them, unfortunately. So, so we do have to plumb them back in. So we'll be doing that. We'll get to work on that. And um, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, so I will have to probably reroute exactly where the coolant line goes, unfortunately. Um, just in terms of like <laughs> where they jump around and everything. Actually, that could probably work right there. Um, that'll actually be really good because it'll sort of tuck between the two. Um, alrighty, so you can kind of see exactly where this needs to go straight to that blower valve right there. And it bolts down the very bottom down here. Now, this pipe right here, um, I would say go to the air pump, but we don't have anything there to connect to it. So I'm just going to leave that open until I can block it off tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we'll just do that really quickly and it should look really nice. Okay, so that is all now in. I probably will have to... Actually, yeah, I think I might just have to undo that one zip tie there um, for the coolant line because I am starting to stretch it now um, around, that in, around that intake pipe. Um, so yeah, I will adjust that right now. Right, so this is the very last piece right here. We have that one last bracket on there. Once again, just using one of those bolts. Then we're going to be able to bolt it straight into the chassis. It has a bolt already there, ready to go. Um, and that one there goes into that blower valve right there. So let's put it on. Also, I found taking off the OEM strut brace was definitely a lot easier to install this part. Alrighty guys, everything is in. The only thing I've done now is when I was filling up the power steering, I ended up dropping the cap and it went down somewhere and I cannot find it for the life of me, but I'll keep searching. Um, my goal is to hopefully get the front bumper at least back on tonight or if not I don't really mind starting it up in the morning and making sure there's no leaks with the front bumper off That's okay, um, but we will keep it jacked up anyway uh, Just for tomorrow's startup, but the final piece on the car now you guys know that when I ordered this credit kit I really wanted everything to just be black and it had like the nice newer style filters Anyway, we ended up getting this kit and it came with blue silicon joiners and bright yellow Grady filters. Now, not gonna lie, these look super cool, but they are bright yellow. But um, we're just gonna run it for a bit. It's like full Jap spec, so I'm pretty, so I'm pretty stoked. Let's put them on and finish off this build. Now, surely nothing can go wrong putting some filters on. But then again, this is the Zach Baldy YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah.
Beautiful, they slide on quite nicely. So you guys can see, Grady V-mount kind of has like this cool little, uh, cool little area for the intake, which is nice. I don't know how much airflow is going to go to it, but uh, it's very much out the way and very shielded from the rest of the engine. This one seems very far away, but we're going to run it anyway. It's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is so weird, but so cool at the same time. Look at that. The Grady V-mount intercooler kit. The Grady V-mount radiator and intercooler kit looks insane. Completely bolt-on. <laughs> the only issues were... Uh, issues that my car already had from the previous installs of the front mount and the larger radiator But everything is in there now. Everything looks amazing. Needs a really good wipe down <laughs> But we do have to find that power steering thing apart from that everything is good to go Whew, I'm stoked. Rightio, so I just found the power steering cover which I am so very stoked about because that means we can start putting everything back together starting with the strut brace I am very incredibly stoked at how everything has come together Alrighty, time to install the front bumper, make sure nothing hits um, The only issue might be this right here but we can tuck that under a little bit further if we do want to but there is plenty of room underneath that thing Man, I am so ready for this Alrighty, let's put everything back together <laughs> The car is finished. I just put the front bar and everything back on. Everything's all nice and tight, which is gonna suck if I need to change anything, but I don't think there's anything that I'm gonna to need to adjust that's gonna be behind the front bar. Like everything sort of sort of bolts there and does like everything is adjusted from top or bottom. So we should be fine. Everything is all back together. I'm gonna to leave it up in the air because apparently it is easy to bleed that way. We fill the car with coolant, we fill the car with power steering fluid. Now we just have to we just have to do it, I guess. Um, so tomorrow we're gonna to be bleeding this car up, which I'm very, very excited about. Now finally we'll be able to take it for a drive. Hopefully, if everything goes well tomorrow afternoon, which I am very, very eager for. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching the V-Mount saga. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.